Thank you for coming today. I'm going to do an informative speech today. Okay, so this is um, going to be on to inform the audience on the causes, symptoms, prevention, and treatment of Alzheimer's disease. Okay, so have you ever encountered someone who has been diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease? Yes. Yes. Um, maybe or maybe not. I can promise you that in the early stages, it can be it can be hard to diagnose. Um, and disguised really well. So my grandmother knew that something was wrong but could not exactly pinpoint it. You guys may remember that. Imagine Swiss cheese, some holes are bigger than other holes, and then there's some solid pieces of cheese. Have you ever seen it? Makes sense? Yes. So this is how I would picture Alzheimer's disease looking if it had an appearance. Some things are remembered and then some things make their way through the holes, maybe from past or present, real or imagined. The dots are hard to connect, and as caregivers, we must not argue or try to fix them, but rather remain hopeful that there's a cure and celebrate with them where they are. Right? Remember that? We had to do that with her. So, purpose statement of this is I will inform my audience on the causes, symptoms, prevention, and Alzheimer's disease. So, with over 50 million people living with Alzheimer's and other dementias, I'm sure that you have at least known at least one person or someone who's been affected by Alzheimer's or is living with it and remain hopeful for a preventative cure so people can evade this horrible disease. Um, not only have I researched this topic, but I've also experienced this with my grandmother, several former dental patients and other um, family members. So today I'll talk about what Alzheimer's disease is, the causes and the symptoms, and potential prevention and treatments that are available. And so the first, it is important to understand what Alzheimer's disease is. So according to Alzheimer's disease diagnosis and treatment, the most common form of dementia among older people is Alzheimer's disease, which involves the parts of the brain that control thought, memory, and language. And so that came from um, the, an article in Alzheimer's disease and diagnosis and treatment um, in prevention magazine. So according to this disease and diagnosis, um, treatment stated that age is the most important known risk factor for Alzheimer's disease and a person can outlive it eight to ten years longer than when they were first diagnosed with it. So some though have lived up to 20 years after being diagnosed with it. So when someone's diagnosed, they have Typically, they get sick or something like that, and um, actually, mama was more like closer to 20 years. So, um, in Alzheimer's disease diagnosis and treatment, noted that no, in November 1906, that Aloy Alzheimer, that's his last name, um, was probably the first to correlate senile plaque, which is, um, an, it's on the uh, brain, and then also neurofibrillary um, tangle, which is fibrils um, within the association of the neocortex with disease diagnosis and severity. So it goes into deeper um, with that and what he had to discuss, but it is perhaps less well known that Alzheimer's also associated um, cerebrovascular involvement and angiogenesis with his first description of Alzheimer's disease, neuropathy, and um, features that he termed endothelium and new vessel formation in the diseased brain. So he basically could break it down and see with different scans um, and different things and parts of the brain that he tested. So it's perhaps less well known um, that in the article, what causes Alzheimer's disease, found on the National Institute of Aging website um, states that scientists are learning how age-related changes in the brain may harm neurons and affect other types of brain cells that contribute to Alzheimer's disease. So these age-related changes include um, atrophy or shrinking of certain parts of the brain, inflammation, vascular damage, production of unstable molecules called free radicals, and breakdown of energy production within the cells. So, it definitely has a lot to do with like external factors and we'll get into that a little bit later. Um, so now that we know what Alzheimer's disease is and causes, 
let's talk about the diagnosis and management of the deteriorating of the brain disease. So in diagnosis and management of neuropsychiatric symptoms of Alzheimer's disease, Walensky, Drake, and Bostick explore the different types of imaging to dis, um, diagnose and monitor changes in patients with dementia and other types of psychological diseases. So these can mimic one another. So sometimes people may not have Alzheimer's or dementia, they may have another psychological disease or disorder of the brain that can be fixed with medication. So it's, there's different tests to make sure that they're not treating or diagnosing one over the other. Um, so they can explain different types of Med they explain that different types of medications that can be used to help treat combative co cognitive symptoms as well. So some people with Alzheimer's will get combative, like mama would get upset and get angry. Mm -hmm. So, and if you try to argue with her, it got worse. But there's medications that help relax her and try to keep her from doing that. Um, in diagnosis and management of neuropsychiatric symptoms in Alzheimer's disease, it is stated that the clinical diagnosis of neuropsychiatric symptoms or NPS in Alzheimer's is facili um, facilitated by the use of neuropsychiatric inventory. So that's a way that they test and see um, which they are doing. So CT and MRI scans can be useful in detecting structural changes indicating Alzheimer's disease. So say they had one because they were prevent presenting these symptoms and then they can look at it say five years later to see if any changes have happened in the brain. And then they can tell by those changes if that's really what it is or if it's just a type of dementia. So other promising diagnostic um, methodologies that are le less frequently used in the clinical setting include positron emission tomography or a PET scan for detecting, and you may have heard that with people detecting cancer, so they can use that. Um, detecting amyloid and blood tests for detecting um, serum biomarkers. So also in diagnosis and management of neuropsychiatric symptoms and Alzheimer's disease, numerous pharmaceutical agents have been studied for their use in managing NPS. And with these antipsychotics being popular for managing agitation, but also having significant side effects. So non-pharmacological um, interventions such as Reminiscence therapy and the describe, investigate, create, and evaluate or guide approach may be able to provide treatment without such adverse effects. So um, we experienced a decline in my grandmother through the years and I would compare it to Swiss cheese as stated before. So there are holes in her memory and we use the recommended supplements as directed such as omega-3, fatty acids, multivitamins, and vitamin B12 to help with um, keeping her from further getting the memory loss. And they may have helped prolong her memory some, but if she saw a blue cat, we didn't argue, right? right. She said she saw a blue cat, we did not argue. <laughs> so we have discussed the ways to use scans and tests to diagnose the internal degenerative disease. Now let's look at other ways to recognize external symptoms and ways to help prevent this horrible disease. So in the Tallahassee Democrat, the article, Think of Your Brain, Alzheimer's and Dementia Awareness, recognizes signs and symptoms. It tells us that there are 50 million people worldwide that are living with Alzheimer's and other dementias, and that there are some things that we can do to take care of ourselves to help combat and prevent this disease. So the Tallahassee Democrat also notes that those in assisted living homes that have been affected by Alzheimer's may have more trouble with memory loss due to COVID-19 restrictions. So we experienced this with my grandmother and prayed that she would remember us once we got to see her again in person and not just through a screen or a window. So we had a lot of conversation about that because we had Alzheimer's. So in the Tallahassee Democrat, the article, Think of Your Brain, Alzheimer's and Dementia Awareness, recognizes signs and symptoms. It also offers 10 warning signs listed from the Alzheimer's Association. So let's name the top five. Memory loss, challenges in planning or solving problems, Difficulty completing tasks, confusion with time or place, and trouble understanding visual or spatial relationships. So, also in the Tallahassee Democrat, um, there's ways that you can improve your brain health, and those are also listed from the um, Alzheimer's Association. So here are the eight recommended ones. Quit smoking, prevent and manage high blood pressure and high cholesterol, 
maintain a healthy weight, get enough sleep, stay engaged, manage blood sugar, and drink alcoholic beverages in moderation. <laughs> so that's definitely, a, those are things that we can all do. For all that, and all those things will help, not just our memory, but other parts of our lives. So that concludes my discussion on Alzheimer's disease and let us review. Alzheimer's disease is mysterious and the one common factor is that some aging humans experience it and we should take note of the symptoms, seek medical help at the time of onset to get help and combat this horrific disease. Alzheimer's disease involves the parts of the brain that control thought, memory, and language. So there are several different imaging scans and tests that can be performed to differentiate Alzheimer's disease from other dementias and psychological diseases. And there are some signs that we can recognize that may be an early onset of this disease and also things that we can do to take care of ourselves to help prevent this disease. So with over 50 million people worldwide living with Alzheimer's disease, chances are that you know someone who has been diagnosed with Alzheimer's or affected by it in some way. We established that. And I pray that none of you have to experience a family member or yourself suffer with the horrible symptoms and decline associated with Alzheimer's disease and other dementias. So thank you, that concludes my um, information speech on Alzheimer's disease, and we do have um, any questions? No. Pretty helpful, helped you understand it a little bit more? Definitely. All right, well, thank you guys very much.